Now, Podcast One brings you Spike's Car Radio, a downloadable cars and coffee, hosted by writer, comedian, and automotive enthusiast, Spike Ferriston. Now, here's Spike. Welcome to Spike's Car Radio. We're here in the Beverly Hills 90210 with someone, you know, it's funny. I always say we're here with Beverly Hills 90210 to say because we, we record this show in Malibu and sometimes here. But I'm with a cast member from Beverly Hills 90210, Ian Zaring. Ian Zaring. Close. I, I've been called for Spike. Ian. And Ian. And, um, OG 90210. <laughs> and, of oh. course, uh, my co-host, The Real Zuckerman. Let's get right into the name <laughs> pronunciation. Because uh, okay. uh, the hardest three letters ever. Do you think? Do yeah. You know, according to is, what you told me. So the, it's pronounced Ian. Uh, I'm just my ma- parents called me. It's my friends and family have always called me. And and what is the difference? Like, what is it like ion? Like an ion? Like some no, sort of. No, that would be a positively charged <laughs> electron. This is just a name that my mom uh, gravitated towards, wanting to name me after my grandfather, Irving, but didn't think that that was cool. But it wasn't Irving. Ir- it wasn't Irving. <laughs> no, no. She just <laughs> took the I. Spike, it was just the I. <laughs> she so, didn't. Uh, uh, she the dead really, Jewish uh, naming yeah, uh, well, convention. You know, Zuckerman and I have, we use a lot of our old Jewish family names when we talk talk to each other. I, I'm Morris Fernstein. I, I'm Are Irish you? and Roman Catholic, but I have a Jewish part of my family, so I, I'm referred to as Morris Fernstein. Morris, my Morris Fernstein. Very Hamish show. And who are yeah. you? Who well, are you? Okay. Zuckerman, we, you, you are we, Zuckerman. We but could be, I could be... Uh, er, I Moshe? Could be, no, no, What's uh, your middle Har- name? It's, it's Stuart, but my grandfather was Abraham, Abe. <laughs> Zuckerman, <laughs> Abe. Abe. Yeah, and these, then, these yeah. biblical names, they just and don't, my, they're not <laughs> fluid <laughs> in today's society. My father was Harvey Solomon Zuckerman. That's it's really cool. Harvey but it, Solomon. But Solomon. is that a very uh, um, I, I, a common pronunciation for that name? Because I hear Ian's all the time. I, you know, I'm, over the course of, of my life, I've been hearing more Ian's, and I think as my celebrity has grown, yes. the name has become a little bit more <laughs> So people are naming their children I've, Ian. I've heard more Ian's, uh, you know, when I was young that was never heard of. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been called a lot worse than Ian. But Are there any famous Ian's other than you? Uh I, I don't know. <laughs> There's a bunch of Armenian irons. Armen- Armen- Let's go with Ian. Make our lives easier. Uh, you can call me whatever you want. Craig. Craig? No, Craig. We did that on Seinfeld. Craig? No, Craig. Do you remember that line? Yes. You don't remember that line. Anyway, it's good to see you again, man. I Thank haven't you. seen you. you since and the I, Super Bowl. Since the Super Bowl. But that's where we met, right? Right. Uh, what, or you were a Patriots fan? In an, no. Uh, you weren't. So I was really, I'm always, I've always been a Giants fan. I grew up in New Jersey. Right, right. So, so uh, why were you there? Uh, just because I had a ticket. You Who wouldn't go ticket. to a Super Bowl? Right, right. You, uh, my son was so excited to meet you because he loves Sharknado. Yeah. My kids love Sharknado. I look at Sharknado and I go, this can't be fun. I get it. But my kids were so excited about this movie. Um, uh, probably the, the, the coolest piece of swag I think I've ever given them was a Sharknado mug. You know the mug that looks like the coffee? Absolutely. The coffee cup that has a little shark mouth in it? Mm-hmm. But my son Jack, who I, who was sick at home this morning, said to say hello. He was so excited that I was coming. We'll to call see him you after today. this, and I can say hi to him. I hope he feels better. <laughs> he doesn't have a phone. He's nine. Well, how about the house phone? Do you have a landline you anymore? Call. You stay away from my son. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. But um, at, at the time when I met you, um, we were doing car matchmaker. Um, it became apparent that you were this car guy that you've always been a guy kind of addicted to to motors and uh, and I remember you said uh, lawn mowers and motorcycles when you were a kid I, the combustion engine to me as a right. child was the most miraculous invention ever in my world but lawn mowers and motorcycles exactly what got me going when I was a kid because yeah. I mowed lawns to make money yeah and my mom wouldn't let me have a motorcycle Right? Is that what happened to you? My mother would never let me have a motor. <laughs> are you kidding? She said, there's two things I could never have under her roof. And that was a dog and a motorcycle. And those are the two first things I got when I had my own roof. Really? Absolutely. <clears throat> so so uh, was that the, for me, that was uh, 17 years old. That's when I bought my first motorcycle. What did, what, how old were you? 21. 21. And what did you get? I had a Suzuki Tempter. It was a 650 <laughs> or a 750. Wow. I was living out here in California. And I just thought it was so... It was so liberating. I mean, I could be out in the wind, and it's just, I just felt like I was flying. Pre-helmet loss. Uh, well, I always wore a helmet, and, and it, uh, it so just... So wait, wait a minute. When were the helmet laws in California instituted? Gary Busey uh, pretty much had a big really? head in that. I'd say hand, but it's, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's what scrambled his eggs that caused so uh, the law. So before of... then, people were out here riding without 
helmets? I think helmet laws came in, if I recall, about 94, 5. Wow. So before that. Wasn't he, it earlier than that? No, because I, I, I rode all the time. Um, He's a PI attorney, personal injury, so right. he, he would know this. Yeah. This is when business started getting real good. Mm, yeah, I know, because people survive <laughs> things they should have died from. <laughs> right, uh, see? But, uh, <laughs> you know, there's yeah. such a sad I, truth. I was know, stupid. It's... I loved riding without my helmet. I liked I liked being able, and then I liked being able to park on sidewalks, which was a late 80s, early 90s uh, thing you were allowed to do. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. So, wait, so you grew up in New Jersey, and then you came out here with your family or just by yourself? No, I, I, uh, I had taken semesters off from college uh, to come out to California. Mm-hmm. Uh, for pilot season, the spring semester, you know, starting in January all the way through, you know, March, it, it's back then it, pilot season was pretty intensive during those months mm-hmm. and, uh, really wasn't able to garner much work. And I went back and finished up college and I came back here again after being on a soap opera, thinking I had a little bit of street cred and couldn't get arrested. Mm-hmm. And I just felt like everything was so superficial, so shallow here. I couldn't. Um, you know, you, you meet a girl and you tell her you're an actor, and then that was the end of it because everybody's an actor. <laughs> and I, I said, uh, I, I started saying, well, I'm a casting associate, and then I would get a little play, but then I started not liking myself because I have always been a one girl. I always wanted a girlfriend. I never really cared to date. I just mm-hmm. wanted a relationship, and I found that if I was lying, then it would never lead to anything. And mm-hmm. so I went back to New Jersey thinking that the work ethic was much more my speed in, in New York. Everyone was motivated for other reasons other than being opportunistic at the cost of someone else. Mm-hmm. And I felt that was the way it was out here. There were garmentos and jewelry and, and finance and it was much more diversity. But didn't you like riding your motorcycle out here? Uh, <laughs> didn't that? Well, I sold it. I, you know, I knew I still had a long road in front of me and I'd get another motorcycle mm-hmm. eventually. Um, my first audition back after I was calling BS on California was for a TV show called The Class of Beverly Hills. And um, I just said, you know, if you get it, it shoots in California. I said, okay, well, let me get it, and then I could worry about it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I got it. So brought me back out to California, late 89, and I've been out here ever since. Wow. And having a motorcycle <clears throat> ever since, too. And, and is cars that, is and that all was, that stuff. Was that your primary transportation, a motorcycle? Or did you start no, getting no, no, into no. the car thing? I, You know, my car thing started... Very young. Um, I had older brothers. Right. And in Jersey, everyone had a basement and mm-hmm. a ping pong table. And when that ping pong table wasn't used for ping pong, it was used to put your AFX track, Aurora track, that you would snap together. Mm-hmm. And they were like these little mini slot cars. And my brothers had Camaros, and I had a 60 Corvette, maroon, white Cobes. <laughs> and I just I would just hold that car up to my nose and smell it because of the, the electrical <laughs> smell and the little – just it turned me on. Right, right. I just – I dug it. And we had so much track that the car would get lost in the maze. If it fell apart, you had to disassemble the track. Um, later on in life, I, uh, my first car was a Toyota Celica. I was very proud. I bought that myself. That's, was, you know, that's a bold move. Ni- that? 1982 Celica that, GTS. Oh, yeah. That but yeah. Hold on. That I mean, in, nice New Jer- in New Jersey, that time in 1982, and you're buying an import car. Not a very popular decision. Did you did you have friends that were angry at you because of that? I had friends that were just so happy that someone in their social circle had a car. <laughs> That's are it, you right? kidding? Or, let's they go out. Are you kidding? <laughs> they didn't care. No, no. I had some friends that had old Mustangs. And why did you choose a Toyota Celica? Because you're you're hot. Hurt. You're a Ford guy, right? It had right? flared fenders. Right. It had wide tires. It was a five-speed. It was black and gray. The, the headlights popped up. I just thought it was awesome. Mm-hmm. The rear sloping uh, um, window, I got these louvers. Remember oh, louvers? louvers. That was a big deal. The car was really sexy, and I just I just dug it. Well, and he just it sold cost me, me one. I, now well, I want a Toyota Celica. You know, it was $11,500. Uh-huh. Lot which of money back then. Yeah, was that's a, big a ton. Sp- but, you know, I'd been making commercials and stuff since I was 12 years old. My dad allowed me to withdraw money from my account. Since I had worked for it, I'd earned it. That's great. And uh, I, I had it for a couple of years. When I came out for pilot season once uh, in college, I drove out here. I made it out here in like two and a half days. <laughs> I was so stupid. I drove across the country, and I'm speeding across uh, Making time. The, the panhandle. And the sun was so bright that I just tucked a pillowcase into the windshield between the the, uh, the windshield and where, where it closes. But I had a 
a pillowcase that looked like a checkered flag. It was a black and white check pillowcase. And as I'm going through Texas, I stop for gas, and they've got these Texas Longhorns that they sell, <laughs> you know, at an a, 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 whatever it is. So I got a bungee, and I bungeed the Longhorns on the front of my <laughs> my car. I drove out here. Uh, and when I got here, I, I quickly got rid of that crap because that doesn't fly <laughs> here, but I thought I was cool. And like two days later, my car got stolen. Really? It got stolen. I was so, I felt... Violated. Violated, yes. Violated. You felt violated. A well, better word. A yes, better that, that, that is a better word. Um, it I, They found it like four days later, and it was an empty shell of a car. <laughs> a carcass. It, it was, Where did they <laughs> find it? Uh, Where did they somewhere find it? downtown L.A. I, I get, went to see it. All that was left, literally... They took everything right down to the carpet in the car. The only thing left was a stick shift knob, which I, well, which right. I took. California. <laughs> that's so yeah. great. You know, it, 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 Toyota's still one of the most stolen cars, right, Suckerman? I mean, that's like one of the top. Uh, Hondas and Toyotas are the ones that get stolen. Yeah. They get they get taken down to the parts, and the, they, they sell the parts, right? Right. Isn't that why those that's get— what, That's what's called a chop shop. Right. That's, uh, that's why there's uh, guys in the auto body business that are uh, millionaires. Right, right. And people think it's always the nice cars that get stolen. Not out here. No, it's, it's always where there's the, the most demand for yeah, parts Yeah, where there's are. the most demand, right. And now they're, you know, uh, every once in a while I'll drive down my hill. I live in West L.A., and I'll see a car uh, up on cinder blocks uh, with the wheels really? gone. Or lately, you know what it's been is uh, Zuckerman, Porsche Porsche headlight assemblies. Right. Headlights they and just airbag pull them, modules. They pull them out, so you just see these, like, skulls, the fronts of cars. Right. I think the, we're, no all, wow. we're all about the same age, and you remember going into the city, maybe, when you were... New York? When you, yeah, New York, and yeah. seeing cars that were just stripped oh, on the jacked. side of, yeah, the, yeah. of the of the expressway. Dismantled so, right there where they sat. Right. So did you, you get insurance money for that, and you get something new? What was your uh, L.A. car of choice? Uh, well... When I, uh, I I rented a, a car from Rent-A-Rec. <laughs> <laughs> I love Rent-A-Rec. They still have that? Back in in Oh, I love those guys. Five. That's that was. I had a Volkswagen, and every time I would make so a sharp wait, left so turn, so the right can, door would fly open. In case people don't know what Rent-A-Rec was, Rent-A-Rec was kind of junker cars <laughs> that you could rent. <laughs> it's exactly what it says. You could even buy these Rent-A-Recs. But um, it was cheap, though. It's like it was fifteen bucks oh, a it was the week best. or something. It, well, because, like that. And it wasn't a new, you know, ridiculous new car. It was just some old cool thing. So, for instance, Zuckerman, I went to uh, the Emmys with the Letterman Riders, and I was driving by Rent a Rec when we came out from New York to L.A. And there was a giant pink Cadillac Fleetwood limousine at Rent a Rec, and I said, "That's what I'm renting." <laughs> Did you yeah. Emmys? And I rented it, and all of the writers from the writing staff got inside, and it had a giant sunroof, and we drove to the Emmys in this pink Cadillac fleet. Spike, I you are such a pimp. You are rent that's a so rec. dope. Rent a Rec. Remember, it was awesome. Awesome. It's sad that they're not around. I, I had the rent a Rec uh, for the length of stay that I right. had out here, and then when I got back, I uh, got the insurance money, of course. And I bought a Mitsubishi Starion. Oh, yeah. Dude! Yeah. Remember that thing? Oh, yeah. Talk about Twin blisters. Total yeah. nerd was a, no, it was a. It was a uh, I've inter- never seen it's anybody an cooler high- on the side. Yes. It was <laughs> high red. Five. I've never seen anybody high five over a Mitsubishi. That what was, are you talking that about? That was oh. a sports car. 200 horsepower. 180, 200. I don't know. It was, it it was, was fast. Zero to 60 in the six second range. Seriously? Oh, yeah. That was it. I don't even know. It was but it was red. waving his fingers. Six it was second uh, range. But that was a big deal, six seconds. And what, and I don't that, even know what you're the, talking about. The, the Mitsubishi what? It was the also a, a Come on. Spike. It was also a Dodge. Star it was, a, was a little, badge. This is a Dodge. I'm a little oh, you don't know what we're talking about, Spike. Yeah, we're one of you with I walked it out of my memory. <laughs> it was a very tough looking. It was an early kind of Transformers 1985 star. Mitsubishi Starion. I'm Googling. Showing pictures that match. Ah, here it is. All right, let's have a look Isn't at this Isn't it great? Guy. You can just pull up their cars from yesterday. Do, do you wish you still had this car, Zuckerman? This there actually is one, one for sale right now. I, it Ooh. came up on, uh, <laughs> I think. Uh, <laughs> you what know, what else? do you know? Every do you remember car? that? Oh, yeah, there you go. Remember that? Yeah, oh, I don't know. Kind of looks it? like a 944. I w- well, that was a and huge one ca- step yes, Zuckerman, finish. Okay. One came for sale. And you're thinking about buying it? No, I just happened to be looking at it. Bring a trailer. <laughs> uh, bring a trailer has one with like eleven thousand miles. Somebody thought oh they God. had the car. It's amazing what bring a trailer can do to us. They I'm going to make I'm you want to buy that. I'm going to go back to car stealing for a second. One of my lawyers just came up to me this morning and said that his car was broken into. And really? you know what the thieves took? No, 
a bag with two bowling balls and bowling shoes in it. Really? Yeah, boy, did they get the wrong thing. Wow. They must have really thought they had the swag and said, I don't know how much crack you can get for two bowling balls, but it's not <laughs> It's not a lot. Yeah. yeah. Somebody stole some self-help CDs or DVDs from my wife's seat, left everything else there. They just stole the self not a lot of crack for that either. You know? No. They're just well, trying maybe. to better themselves. So they knew what they were getting. <laughs> My the last, the last thing I'm going to steal, self-help books. <laughs> and then I'm going to That get is better. the last thing. Hopefully you won't have right. to steal after you figure it out. Now, you are you really are uh, like a nut job gearhead, right? You you tried to race the Daytona 500 at one point. What was that all about? Uh no, well, what, I thought I had delusions of grandeur. I started. Well, all of us thought we were going to be professional racers. So, yeah. what what is that moment for you? Well, it's the moment where um, Mazda uh, had a friend who had a relationship with Mazda, and they were uh, kind of talking to me about getting into SCCA racing, and they had something called the uh, Mazda MX. Is it the MX Five Cup Series or sounds sounds good? Something like that. It's like twelve, thirteen years ago. Uh, and I got into it and worked with, uh, Ed Brown, who, uh, races, uh, what is it, Ed from, uh, Patron Tequila, mm -hmm. uh, endurance racing. He's gone on to great things. Me, not so much. I just <laughs> could not, uh, achieve the level of success <clears throat> necessary to attract sponsors. So you're racing Miatas, right? I'm racing Miatas, which is full-on racing. I mean, And had you done any racing at all before? No, but I did a lot of training. Right. And, so you know, know how to get around a track? Absolutely. Did, but, you, did you know how to mix it up around a track? How many cars are on the track at the same time? This is daunting. In the uh, Cup Series? Yeah. Oh, there could be 20 cars on the 20 cars. Oh, you're yeah. all in Miatas. Which all, is, they're uh, all spec. They're all the same. Right. But, you know, and, and not a lot of people the, are the skill levels. And I just never achieved the skill level. And, you know, it's a very expensive sport. So what sport. were you finishing? So would you ever? I, if I finished. <laughs> <laughs> you were DNFing a yeah, lot? Yeah, well, you know, there was one time at Road Atlanta, and I packed it into the tires at 70 miles an hour sideways. <laughs> <laughs> and that was a $17,000 weekend, oh, you know, between transporting ouch. the car there. So and, you're paying for all that. Yeah. yeah in hopes that, expensive. oh, my God, I'm, like, paying my dues. And then, like, the next weekend, we were at uh, Elkhart Lake, and I, that was, like, a $9,000 weekend. I screwed the car up. And did you like racing the Miata? It's the most raced car in the world, it, right? It, it's... A, it's an awesome car. It's full on racing. You know, it's uh, it doesn't have the torque of like a Porsche or something like that, but it's full on racing. Mm -hmm. And of course, you're at all the top racetracks around the country. I loved it. I just was not good enough. I, you know, I had more desire than money to keep going. Right. So I kind of backed out, realizing like this is never going to happen. And there's uh -huh. like little kids that are passing <laughs> me left and right. <laughs> you know, it's it's not going to happen. Children in Miatas. <laughs> From there, Destroying. I went to the, but you uh, tried the it's lemons, admirable. the 24 hours of lemons. Have you heard of this? Yeah, yeah, series? of course. Of Did mine, you race that? A friend of mine asked if I would be a driver in, in his car. He had a, a an 87 <laughs> RX-7, which if you don't know this series, it, the car cannot cost more than $500. Right. But everybody cheats. I mean, it's yes. the best cheater in <clears throat> all of racing. An RX-7 isn't wins. cheap, even a used RX-7. This was kind of beaten upon, and the engine you open up, it looked horrible. But this guy took the engine... Uh, casing and redid everything on the inside so it was all race prepped ready to go right. the roll cage was uh made to be an extra fuel tank mm -hmm. we would fuel the roll cage for yeah, extra boy. oh yeah i mean it's it's the the cheating that goes on is amazing <laughs> you're expected to cheat you know uh but that was fun but that was a little later in life and i kind of realized wow all this g-force is starting to make me feel nauseous I'm right just like Ugh, all this pressure going around you know after you know two hours in the car yeah it's like oh i'm so happy to step out of the car and i realized you know i'm not digging this as much as i used to like this right how how old were you when this happened uh this was probably in Late 30s. Late 30s. I don't know. I, I start to get motion sickness now when I get on a track. Yeah. I've never had it before. Yeah. And I, and you can't I, go on a roller coaster anymore either, right? I do. But, yeah, I don't like it. A little but motion I've never, disorder? I've never liked it. Oh, I've loved that. No, but I've noticed that I, for the first time, can make myself sick when I'm going around a track. <laughs> like it used to <laughs> Maybe be. it's your own driving if I, were, if I were the passenger doing a ride-along, it would go, yeah, you could do four or five laps and be fine at speed. You yeah. know, I'm talking Hurley Haywood at speed. You right. know, this is thrilling. But then fourth or fifth lap, you're like, okay, i got to get out of the car. It's too right? much G-load on one now, side. Now, if I can move myself around a track in a race car pretty well now i'm making myself sick 
which yeah. is weird. O L D. What you is have that? I'm O-L-D. old. Is that what? Yes. Would you explain this old to brain. me in medical terms. Old brain. Yeah, what yeah. does that mean? It's your brain in your ears. That's what gives you motion sickness. You moron! <laughs> <laughs> Don't you know anything? <laughs> Don't you know anything? <laughs> Wake up and go back to sleep. You're such a stooge. <laughs> Explain it to me, though. I want to understand. Like, is it an inner ear? It's partially inner yeah. ear, partially brain. And what about the inner? Okay, ear? in your inner ear, you have these little crystals. You actually have rocks in your head, and these little <laughs> crystals uh, are, are in your inner ear, yeah. and they need to be in the right place to keep you properly centered. Uh-huh. And when those little crystals or the rocks in your head get loose, yeah. then you're you're not as immune to the motions. Plus, all that jo- your brain's getting a little bit shrunken, jostles My around. My brain is shrinking. Of course, you have atrophy of your brain. I really? notice it. You might not notice it, but I notice it in you. <laughs> and, and, and so uh, there's more to slosh around. Why does your brain shrink when you get old? Everything shrinks when you get old. Really? Yes. Well, how do we reverse that? What can ah, we do? Okay. If we're well, let's digress. talk about the rocks. In it. Like, I, I want to continue going on a racetrack and not making myself There sick. are maneuvers that you can look up on the internet. There are special maneuvers to get the rocks back in your head, or there's a chair you so can funny. sit in, or as far as... <laughs> there's a chair I can yeah, sit in. Yeah, there is a chair. Because some people have this horrible, horribly where they try to Ver- walk in there, and they're just throwing up all over the place. Really? We used to pay a lot of money to get that. That, but now right. people, <laughs> people, I had a friend who had vertigo and he yeah. get out of bed without right. falling down and, get, and throwing so, exactly. so what next time we're out at the track what do we do Not, you, you don't go racing it's too late you're, you're, <laughs> well, you're you fucked you, 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 we went, you know what you know what helps the hook maneuver when you're loading with G you put pressure you, you tense up your body to keep the blood in your head to keep right. the blood where it needs to be uh, 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 yeah uh, they're well, in, well, very interesting upon, <clears> and that's keep, why pilots have pressure suits yeah Keep the blood flow up in their brains. That's what I was ending in this lim- lemons race. I was like hooking just were so you I a, could. Uh, were you a passenger? No, you're in the car by yourself. You're in the car by yourself. Got the radio. It's a full on race prepped car, but it's you know a clunker. And how did you do? Oh, I think we did okay. It was more of a social fun <laughs> thing, you know. We would barbecue and. and There's uh, a lot of drinking associated with the that, lemons. Yeah, I, I, but it's I, fun. I, it's, I judged it's... the Concord lemons uh, a year back, uh, I think, at, in Monterey, and it was a drinking contest more than anything else. There's, There's a lot of people getting drunk at nine in the morning, and good group, and uh, I loved it because they don't take themselves so seriously. Nobody has a nice car. Everything's for fun and. It's a nice counterpoint to the Monterey thing. Have you seen that, Zuckerman? I have not. And they have this race now, you. too. The junkers go around Le the track. And, the, yeah. It was uh, Death Cab for Cutie that won. It was a, an old Volvo that I think had a jet engine in it. This thing <laughs> would lap everybody. It was an old, like, a 240DL or something like Turbine that. Turbine version. <laughs> Whatever. It was so fast. It was, I mean, it's obvious that they're cheating. The car was ridiculously wow. fast. But... They couldn't figure out how they were doing it. I mean, mm-hmm. you open up the hood. They you can't open up it. the engine, but you can open up the hood. There yeah. was no blower. There was no. I mean, whatever they did, this car was ridiculous. What, what racing series do you think uh, guys are cheating the most? Professional racing series. All, okay, every, every race series. series. Every race series, really? Absolutely. It started with him saying he was, what, a casting advisor? And then it went into right. race. It's nothing No, but I mean, F- all, F1, you know, Indy, who's... It's uh, all about exploiting the rules. Remember Porsche, the 935 right. and the slant? <clears throat> no, that was about yeah, basically that's a, cheating. Yeah, it's a while ago. Who's cheating right now? I mean, and I what does that look that like? Question. And that's who's, cheating. And who's checking? Nobody the sanctioning knows. body. The sanctioning yeah, body. You've got to fit within the specifications, and if right. your car does, they don't go any deeper than that. But, but after somebody wins, are they taking the car apart and just having bad a look? Bad for business, Ferrison. It's bad for business. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> So they don't. It's they just, just hold open, their noses. Right, hold their hands. noses and like, open cigarette. All right, we're going to do a break. We'll be right back with Ian Zering. Ian. Ian. Craig. Craig. When you're looking to buy a car, you want to make sure that you're getting real pricing on actual inventory. Unfortunately, a lot of times, this isn't the case. People configure cars online only later to find out they're not available. This just happened to my brother. Well... With True Car, you get real pricing on actual inventory. This is not pricing offered by True Car, but pricing from an actual dealer. And not just any dealer, but a True Car certified dealer. This is a carefully curated network of dealers committed to transparency and offering you a competitive market price. Using True Car, you can easily find the car you want. 
Next, TrueCar will show you what other people in your area paid for the same car you're looking for. Now you know what a fair price is, so you can feel confident. And don't we all want to feel confident? Over 3 million cars have been sold to TrueCar users by the TrueCar Certified Dealer Network. There are over 13,000 TrueCar Certified Dealers nationwide. You will work directly with a TrueCar Certified Dealer contact. True car users are more likely to enjoy a fast buying process when they connect with True Car certified dealers. True Car users save an average of over $3,000 off MSRP. When you're ready to buy, visit True Car to enjoy a more confident car buying experience. Some features not available in all states. And guess what? I'm not telling you what features and what states. Hey, my name is James Petrogallo. I'm Jimmy Wisman. Please join us every single Tuesday for Crime in Sports. So fun. You like sports? You don't have to. Let's just set up a context and find out what an idiot did wrong. What I do like you say? It. I'm in. We're going to do that each and every week. We take an athlete, we break him down, we make fun of everything he's ever done. Yeah. But in order to do that, we have to build up and tell you all about their career and get you to what, James? To grace. grace. And then right. watch them fall from grace Who as they inevitably like that? do. Join us. Big criminals, small yeah. criminals, sports you've never heard of. Yeah. Doesn't matter. It's the crime. It's the comedy. It's such a good time. Join us every Tuesday for Crime in Sports. You can join us every Tuesday at PodcastOne.com, the Podcast One app, or subscribe on all Apple products. Find us every Tuesday and laugh at people. You're listening to Spike's Car Radio. All right, we're back with Ion Zering. Ion Zering. <laughs> you know what I'm watching? I don't know if you're watching, um, but it reminds me of you. I- I'm watching Riverdale right now on Netflix. It's, oh. it's my guilty pleasure with my wife. All these super good-looking young people. And Luke Perry. And Luke Perry. Yeah. And uh, it just reminded me of, you know, I knew I was coming in this morning. You know, that you do Beverly Hills 90210. That was, a, that was the same deal back then, right? This this hugely popular show with a, a super good-looking cast. Were you single when you were doing that show? Most of the time, yeah. Most of the time. And it, so the girls must have been crazy, right? Oh, boy. You know, I, I've always, like I said, I've always oh, preferred boy. a girlfriend. You know, dating uh, multiple girls. But that doesn't stop nominating him trouble. for the U.N. He's saying no, the right thing. But that you know does what? not stop the women from coming after you. It must have been It must have been. It's nuts. always very flattering. But again, I, you know, my focus was the work. Oh, come on. <laughs> look come at on, we're him, more look at shallow him than that. Red. I, I, yeah, I'm a shallow no. person. Tell I know what, like, my, what it was I, like. I had, from 16 to 26, <clears throat> my high school sweetheart. Uh, really? Yeah. You, and, that's who you were. See, he's kind of like, I was the same kind of yeah. guy, too. I, I would meet a girl and date her for four years, and we'd either get engaged or break up. <laughs> yeah. And but, here, <laughs> here I was thinking, looking at guys like you, when I couldn't catch anything but a cold back then, and thinking, these guys on these TV shows, they must have just a line yeah, like he's, a deli, he's deli numbers. Yeah, he's not going to cough it up right there, now. There were some, you know, I had some single times, and, you know, certainly single being times. on a, a successful television show helps. But but but, but it's, it was different back then, too. There's no... Look at he's making secret signals no, to Zuckerman. what are you talking about? <laughs> Nothing. Come on. Come on. Um, so funny. You know, it's... Uh, it, it's not like today. Like, it, people have access. Like, these Riverdale guys, they, the, people have access to them on a million different apps. Oh, yeah. You know, for oh, you yeah. back then, you guys, it's primarily maybe if you go to Sky Bar or something, right? Or you, you, <laughs> make, it a, bar, or you make an appearance. <laughs> yeah. You know, we, I would generally travel just about every weekend going to a car show. Right. Make an appearance at a World of Wheels car show. Now, why or... were you doing that at car shows? Just for the fun of it. Well, it was a paid appearance. It was. It was a way to... But why were they calling you for car shows when you're on Beverly Hills 90210? Because the people that would attend car shows were our audience. Really? Young adults. That's interesting. Yeah. That makes no sense to me. <laughs> because if why want... not malls? Why not? Well, we would go to mall, do mall appearances as well. Right. But there was a time where, you know, for a couple of years, every weekend I was away. I'd wake up at a hotel somewhere. I wouldn't know where I was until I... Really? Look at the phone book in the bedstand. I just, where the hell am I? And that show ran for 10 years? Is that yeah. what you said? 10 years. Yeah. That's 90 a huge, to 2000. Look at that. What a huge a whole run. decade. Yeah. Well, I don't think Riverdale's going to make that. <laughs> now, are you, are you, are you going to critique their looks on the podcast like we were doing beforehand? Well, I thought Luke Perry and Riverdale has aged. He's, he's an honestly aged man. I think he looks good. I think he's in good shape. His acting's good, and he looks as he should. You said at withered. This age. You said withered and weathered before. before <laughs> but that's, we were but that's the age we're all getting to: withered and weathered age, right? Shrunk in, yes, like yes. your brain. Yeah. 
<laughs> Riverdale, Wednesdays, 8 o'clock. <laughs> the CW. It's my buddy Luke. Let's, yeah. let's follow him. Uh, are you friends with Luke Perry? Absolutely. I just the, spoke to him show, yesterday. I'm not lying. I'm watching this show. It's my uh, guilty pleasure. Right. Uh, I believe there are 13 episodes in this first season. And my wife saved them for the nights where we can sit and watch TV together. Nice. It, we really, really like the show. It's great. And Luke... He's not listening, but if you are, you're great. He's fantastic. Luke, Luke is a fantastic, and guy. we're happy to see him uh, on our screen. Um, anyways, let's get to the important stuff. Sharknado. Sharknado. <laughs> <laughs> where are you at your life and your career when Sharknado comes along? Uh, like, where are you at a point where you're like, uh, things are going well, I, I, I'm or the, things are I'm, bad, I've or got they... one baby, <clears throat> and I've got another on the way, and I'm wondering what the hell am I going to do? Because, as you may know, living here in Los Angeles is not inexpensive and as an actor every gig's got a closing curtain i'm trying to figure out what needs to happen so i'm out pitching television shows reality i'm out um trying to audition for everything i can um you know it's not just enough to uh to step along stones right. on my journey as an actor you got to get in the water and turn over yeah if stone. you're if you're an actor and you're going to sit and wait for people to call you you're no, dead right I, you it's... know i do i do all the things that unsuccessful people don't want to do right right and i'll find my way that way and this is an insane business that we're in um and it gets more insane when you add that family to it yeah. That's where you really are up at three or four in the morning, going, "Holy, holy crap!" Yeah, you don't wow. sleep. It's a no fail <laughs> job. You can't fail. It's great that. when it's great, Not, and yeah. then it's quiet for a long time. So it can be. It's a lot like professional racing, is what I tell people. It's, a, it's like, harrowing. I mean, you really got to be prepared. Right. Or you know, I was thinking, God, do I need to like move somewhere where the cost of living is is a yes. fraction of what it is right. here? But so I get this uh, call from my agent, and he says, "I got this straight up offer for you." Uh, for this movie, Dark Skies, and uh, I need you to read it right away because they're starting production in four days. Mm -hmm. So immediately that tells me somebody fell out because <clears throat> right. you don't cast but four days. But you've heard straight out offer, and you're like, all right, well, there's some money dark coming. Dark Skies, all right, send the script, whatever. I'm like, yeah, some money coming. I got kids. I got <laughs> right. had to make my insurance. Yeah, As yeah. an actor, I get my insurance <clears throat> through Screen Actors Guild, you know, SAG-AFTRA. So I read the script, and I'm thinking, oh, oh. And I get halfway through, and there's a scene where <laughs> I have to uh, climb up a rope while a shark jumps out of the water <laughs> and, and chomps up the rope, like jumping up the rope as I'm climbing it. Huh. And I'm thinking, God, you know, if this was, you know, if this was uh, James Cameron, this would be awesome. But this is the asylum, <laughs> which makes very low budget, independent <clears throat> features, mm -hmm. for very little money, and I couldn't imagine that they would have enough. Funding to make quality content. I figured this is just <laughs> stupid. So yeah, how my, will they pull that special effect off? Is what you're thinking, visual right? Visual effects are very expensive. They're expensive. CGI Time is expensive. Consuming. Yes. So as I'm reading, I'm halfway through a script. I say to my wife, "I'm like, honey, I, pff, this is a this is a this is not going to happen. This is just stupid. It's going <laughs> to." Did, did it really take you halfway through the Sharknado script? Well, because I had to give it a shot. I'm like, oh, maybe it'll get better. But right, then I was right, like, right. Oh my god, the climb. But I would think on page scene. one, you'd go page two. You're like, wait a minute, it's raining sharks. <laughs> well, I, I kind of, you know, you'd suspend disbelief and think, okay, maybe this is cool. Right, right. Okay. But then there were so many holes in the script that were left to be filled by visual effects. I just, and that was the, the, the rope scene. I was like, honey, I can't do this. This is a complete <clears throat> piece of poop, and it's never going to propel my career right. any further. And with Mia in her arms and Penna still in her belly, she said, you need to go to work. <laughs> Fill the coffers. <laughs> you need to go to work. And right. in January, not having made my uh, quota to, to earn the, the top tier of insurance, mm -hmm. I realized, oh, she's right. So I, regardless of how I felt this, about the script, I realized this is one of those situations where I'm going to have to take yeah, one for the let's team. let's do it. And this was the first time I really mm. had to take one for the team. This was like – it was tough. I, re I thought this was a complete mm. misstep. Mm-hmm. Until I get to the last scene where I jump into the shark's mouth and chainsaw my way out of it. I'm like, well, damn, this this will be some good footage. I don't care how cheesy it is. At least I'll have that. <laughs> For the acting So I, I, I decide I, I accept it. I, I accepted the part. And, and is, at the time, is it is it known that it's going to be on Sci-Fi Network? No. I, I didn't know that. Okay. I, I thought it was going to be straight to DVD or whatever. And three days into shooting... Um, the director, Anthony C. Ferranti, comes to tell us that we're, because it was a working title, Dark Skies. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, I missed that. It's not Dark Skies? He's like, no, we're calling it 
Sharknado. <laughs> <laughs> and I laugh like you guys. I'm like, oh, seriously, what? They're like, Sharknado. I said, Sharknado? What's the matter? Great White Skies was taken? And I just thought of that. Don't you have a, like a group of people that think about a, a serious title, Sharknado? Yeah, Sharknado. I said, I'm just going to need five minutes. I'm going to the bathroom with my cell phone. I'm talking to my agent. Got to get me off this movie. This is going to be enemy. They're calling it Sharknado. I ain't, don't worry. You're going to make your insurance. It's going to be straight to see DVD. I don't <clears throat> give a crap. This is Sharknado. I, I'm never going to be, I'll never work again. It's going to go right to DVD. You'll cash a check. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I've already committed. Right. I, really, I, I want to make the making of Sharknado. This, I, is, this is great. Is right? This could be a movie good. of it on its own. I said, "Can you change my name in the credits to Ben Dover? Because this is the way I'm feeling right now." <laughs> right. And like, don't worry, don't worry. So <clears throat> begrudgingly, I go back out. The greatest say, ancient in the world, by the way. He's like, "Don't worry, it's going to be worry. fine." He's right. I, I, you know what? As an actor, I, I work with a level of professionalism that doesn't allow me to stray from right. doing what I have to do to make the project whatever it is Once you're in, to you're be in. as great as it can be so I'm yes. listening to the director and I'm running through this uh, long long scene and he's like okay jump I'm like uh, <laughs> hold, cut cut um what, what do you mean jump? What, am I supposed to jump to the right, to the left? He's like, no, it's raining sharks, and there's sharks <laughs> flying, so you need to jump because we're going to put uh, sharks underneath you. And I'm thinking, good God, this is uh, – shoot me now. Shoot me now. I couldn't possibly think that they were going to – like if I jumped really high, as high as I could, well, then I'm going to be clowned. They're going to put a small <laughs> fish, and it's an overreaction. The action has – the reaction has to match the action. Mm -hmm. And there was nothing to work with. I, I – <laughs> So it's, it's not like, even a green screen. So he's like, flail your arms. And I'm like, <laughs> so I'm like running like this, hoping Did that... Did you think at any point you were being punked? Did you think there was a prank show no, involved it was far at some too, point? No, this was far too serious to be a, a prank show. If this was one day, I right. could see it being, but like, we're like day eight, and I'm running through this parking lot, flailing my arms, jumping wildly, and that night I came home and like, they're going to put a guppy under me, they're going to... You know what? How can they possibly paint this scene to make it look like those are uh, actual reactions? <laughs> and you know, I finished the movie, <clears throat> and it aired, and I didn't even watch it. My phone blew up, and so, I like, so was afraid what, to turn my phone. I thought it was. But they, like, what point do you find out it's going on television instead of, or, oh, or short, did it shortly after? It got picked up by Sci-Fi. It was so. Probably, so it aired as a film for, first somewhere. It, it was it released was always, as a film. It was always meant to be a Sci-Fi movie. I sci-fi original movie. Okay, and then 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 Sci-Fi the network picks it up. No, Sci-Fi sci the network always picked it up. They it was always, always had intended it. to be see. a Sci-Fi original okay. movie. I didn't know that, um, and it it blew up into Sharknado. All of a sudden, we all know. embraced it. Yeah, we liked the people. And then involved. when I saw it, we the liked visual the visual effects artist actually was kind of <clears> like a safety net for me because they they painted in visual effects that made my actions plausible reactions right so at least i didn't look foolish flailing my arms there was actually a fish to swat out of the sky but what what's what i liked about it was the the how crazy the concept was it was such a high concept like you you, you were hearing at the time you know the only stuff that's going to sell is high concept stuff and now here's this way over the top high concept thing that we all know could never happen yet that became a fun idea do you know what i'm saying there's, and then it was my kids yeah. who uh, who noticed it that, you know, when your kids get excited about something, when they're like, no, no, we don't want to watch that. We want to watch Sharknado. Then you go, well, all right, now I'm starting to understand what this is, that this is a big, fun entertainment franchise that's campy, over the top, silly, and it's something we can all laugh at. And then, by the way, you know, not a lot of people know this, but I am – I make a cameo appearance in La Valanchula 2. You do. Well, I am. If we do <laughs> six. If we do six, if we can afford you, we'd love to have you in Sharknado My 6. My kids would consider me a hero if I were in Sharknado 6. Like I was in, in – is La Valanchula the same director? Is that the no. same crew? Different it's, crew? It's a different crew, okay. different production company. Look carefully, I think. It's the same it, genre. Look La, carefully. La Valanchula 1. I don't know if I'm in one or two. <laughs> 
But I was an Esquire at the time, so at Sci-Fi, it's all NBC, and they put me in a scene where I uh, get onto a truck and have to be <laughs> taken out of the town before the Lava Angeles or whatever land. And I know what you're talking about. They just everything is done so quickly. They oh. just they're like everybody get in the truck. Okay, now everybody look, look scared. Now run. Now sit. You know, and it was just then bye. They shot a whole scene in like ten minutes. It's mind numbing coming from you know doing other movies and other television shows where yeah. you know they actually care about the quality and the content yeah and it's not like they don't but because it's so frenetic and there is such a short amount of time it kind of lends itself to this new genre it's yeah it is not a new a genre horror movie it's not really a science fiction it's a fun movie it's where everyone's movie. in on the right. joke right. except the people in the movie, but I like and di- <laughs> and did you? If you made? We've made five, five. And they're talking about a six. Six. They've got to do six, of course. You know, it's a franchise, and now ended. so this turns into a biz- big success for you, right? Yeah, because you know, not only is it making you money, but it's getting your name out there in this big way again, and that's got to generate as an business. Actor, it's important to stay topical, right? right? That's what it does. I'm grateful right. for that. I'm and now you're for the work. You're fronting this big uh, franchise for for NBC, who's no slouch, right? No complaints. Is there right in four years? Is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah. There's a, a slot machine. There's a Sharknado slot machine <laughs> I'm standing on top of. <laughs> Nothing makes a person feel more famous than having your that own slot really machine. That is really cool. Yeah. I saw an Ellen DeGeneres slot machine in Vegas two weeks ago and wondered about that. But I thought, that's pretty neat. If you're, you know, someone, you know, just to be walking through a casino and see your face on a slot machine. Did you did you play the Sharknado slot machine? Uh n- uh, yeah, I lost a couple bucks. <laughs> that, 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 that whole slot machine was a surprise to me. Do they pay you for putting your face on a slot machine? You know, that's a really sticky question right now because oh, interesting. they're su- interesting. supposed to. Yeah, that's a licensing mm. deal, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, the Finn Shepard is a uh, – they're allowed to use that at their own discretion. Right. Other than alcohol, firearms, and gambling. Right. Or maybe – uh, pharmaceuticals. I, there's like three That's things. Interesting. And this falls right within the goalpost? Yeah. It falls right between the goalposts. Yeah, Zuckerman and could probably anything handle Anything like this that, for they you. need to speak to the actor to yeah. get permission or negotiate. Sure. And this all happened without, you know, they said they were doing it. I'm like, I'm not really all right with that. We should really talk. Why aren't you all right with it? Yeah. I mean, there should be you some get goddamn paid. money. <laughs> money. No, it just, it, it's just, you know, they don't need any more of it. Right. No, I can't hear you. It's, it's the uh, it's the production company. It's not the network. Right, right. Yeah, but they because really... they own the they own the title. Right, sure. They now, do what... whatever the heck they want. Well, again, an amazing accomplishment. Thanks, bud. I love that story. Uh, like walking in upset and worried, and I've made that phone call before when you're on something, and you're like, oh, what did I do? And they've lied to me, and then it turns out to be this giant. Isn't that, it's unnerving at the same time, isn't it? It's just, it's scary at the same time, because you think the more control I get, then the more mistakes I might make. Do you right. know what I'm saying? Right. You know, it's, and then it's, a, it, it, I always get crazy when that happens, too, because then you go, well, maybe I should just give myself over to management and just do whatever they say, and that's a mistake. There's really just no way to know with these projects. You know, I, I there was a time in my career where I had a focus and I was determined to do certain things, mm-hmm. um, and that led me nowhere. But the right. moment I became more open <clears throat> to whatever the universe had for me, right? then all of a sudden, work started coming. And I was enjoying what I was doing because, you know, actor is kind of limiting, but if I'm an entertainer... Mm-hmm. That's all within there, so it opens me up to do other things. Now you did it. That, is that why you were Chippendale? You were fronting a Chippendale show yeah. for a while. <laughs> yeah, because you know what? That's that was part big of news. Yeah, yeah. And now I the girls to... there. Now that must have been an issue. How did your wife feel about that? By the way, was she cool with it? Uh, she thought that it was a great gig and did loved she, it. Did she come to this? Is more flirty, not <clears throat> dirty right? kind of thing. But mm, actually, were like you on that. stage without your clothes? I uh, was not naked. But I did, you know, <laughs> not totally so, naked. Not totally naked. Did she not bring her no girlfriends any night? Did she oh, come? Oh, absolutely. Na- yeah, absolutely. And, oh my God, look yeah. at that! Did you enjoy that, or were you embarrassed? I loved it. Really? I loved it. Well, you know, I don't even think I could take a dance lesson with my wife. I'd be so embarrassed. I'm just not good at dancing, but it also right. just putting Spike, myself in the dancing. There's something. Or, there's a place called El Floridita. Yeah, it's on I know. Fountain. I know it. I've sat there and just watched. There. On You're Tuesday watch. nights, on Tuesday nights, you go a half hour before they open. They give dance lessons. Okay, salsa. It'll be the best thing you ever did. I'm telling I'm, you, I'm like s- you need a night out with the wife, go. This is going to get me some action? 
Yeah. Yeah, but it's like so nice. I mean, it, it bond, it's bond building. I hope my Dancing wife like is not is, is listening great. right now. I, I know that, and she, she's been asking me for 16 years to take okay. it. Okay, so the that. moment that you do that, she's going to realize that's such a sacrifice on your part. She's going to love you even more because oh, wow. you're outside That's your what I zone. want. Zuckerman, you'll have to come with me. <laughs> I, listen, I have absolutely no rhythm that I can actually drive a, a, a car with a, a clutch and a third right. pan, pedal. It's a miracle. Well, rhythm and timing are different. Really? You, you could oh, I didn't see. I didn't even know that. Yeah, Ian, we got to go in a minute, but I want to talk to you. I, I, some, I thought when we were chatting at the Super Bowl, where my Patriots won, and it was a glorious day. Didn't they um, cheat? I, I thought wasn't we, there cheating involved? There was in no that? cheating, my friend. They, they keep winning. I thought we were talking about um, that you were restoring Mustangs. No, uh, Camaros. Camaros. Yes. I've restored a uh, one Camaro I did in the mid nineties. Uh, an RS SS convertible, sixty sixty eight. Nice. Now, what, am I wrong? To re- am the, I wrong? Uh, were you were you doing the work yourself, or I was uh, some of it, but I was more. In, you know, that car, I was more in terms of like I would find people to do this. Uh, and why did you choose that Camaro? I just loved it. Yeah, I loved it. I have a, a sixty Corvette at home uh, that I've had since nineteen ninety two. Wow. When I did the Camaro, I did that for my brother Jeffrey because. That a, those AFX cars, I had a Camaro, I had a vet. Jeffrey had a Camaro, mm-hmm. so I built it for my brothers. And then I wanted to build, I wanted to race a Camaro. I wanted to get a race prepped car, with purpose built tube frame, but I wanted a Camaro body on it. And then it, it got Shanghai from this show called Overhaulin. Uh huh. And you know, then it got into. Uh, and what do you mean when you say Shanghai? Well, they, they they called me up. This oh, they the wanted to do an stolen. episode with it. Oh, they did. I got pranked uh, on this overhaul and show and they took the car from me uh, and you know the car was rebuilt with every high performance product mm-hmm. uh, I had the engine all built it was a 409 you know fire breathing you know 500 horsepower 500 pounds of torque had a, a Tremec 5 speed I was all set to go but they took it and screwed it up they really did. So they made an episode of television out of it, put up a bunch of their sponsored parts <laughs> that didn't make it. any sense, and well, Frankenstein. You know, not it up. every high performance part worked well <laughs> with every other high performance part. But did they? Did, so when you do a show like that, don't they tell and you? And it what took a year go- to get it from them, right. not seven days. But aren't you oh. shooting with them periodically and seeing how the the build is coming? And or? no, I don't. I'm the prank is on me, thinking that it, my car's been stolen, and the guy whose shop I had it in was dodging me. So the storyline was me trying to find this guy while behind. Behind the scenes, they're building my car. I see. I understand. That's what overhauling is. Uh, and yeah. instead, the prank is they're going to completely screw your car up. And the real prank, yes. Yeah. They, 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 I, I ended up selling the car uh, at Barrett Jackson. Yeah. I had an amazing paint job on it. <clears throat> Did you make any money? I made my money back. I had about 60 into it, mm-hmm. and the car went for 70 And between what Barrett Jackson takes out of it. I walked home with, you know. So you did all right. Well, no. I it was a really, sour experience. Yeah, because I would have like... rather had the car done to my specifications. I didn't. My car wasn't to right. aggrandize their TV show. I felt yeah. kind of mugged on that deal. Because <laughs> he, especially, he was raped again. No, no. you can't use that no, word. Violate. No, violate. 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 Yeah, I mean, it made for good TV, but it's jokes, like at the end of the day, okay. I, didn't get my, uh, <laughs> I didn't get my car, and that, that was the end of that. So. Um, and so what is it now? What is your great white whale? What is the car... That uh, someday when you your new series syndicates and you've made all the money, and then what are you what are you gonna get? Like, what is the one car you'd want? You know, I it, that's like putting a kid in a candy store and saying, "Take whatever you want." I mean, yeah, I, you can take I anything. Would go shop take, in take, Zuckerman's uh, <laughs> garage there because I know he's got a couple hot toys. Uh, you know, it's got to be one thing. What, what is what everybody has that heart? one car that they that they love? Like for me, that's I. I it's different every day, but today it's the Ferrari 250 short wheelbase. I really love Gorgeous. that car. So it's, stunning. It's way beyond anything I could ever afford. Love but I, I dream of that. Right. Um, you know, I I like. A car that you can drive and yet feel great in, uh, demands respect. That uh, the AMG Mercedes mm, with the long, yeah, yeah, yeah the long, AMG GT, yeah, it's muscle just, car, German muscle car. Yeah, but yeah. it's just a gorgeous car. Yeah. It's, <clears throat> it's bold. It's it demands respect. It's it's sexy. I've seen some amazing paint jobs on it, like. Like, yeah. uh, like a minty green. Yeah, yeah. I don't even one you... of those. We drove that, right? I've had a few of those press cars. Yeah, we we had them at Car Matchmaker. They're the best. 
So what you a know, sound, huh? The Mercedes people. There you go. Mercedes, yeah. you want uh, Ian to drive your car for a weekend? You should send him a press car. Yeah, take care of it. I will totally (laughs) Instagram the hell out of that experience. (laughs) We'll get it on the Sharknado six. Oh my god! That's how he'll pull in. Get you some uh, some good props from the Sharknado fans. Well, Ian, that car is spectacular. Thank you for stopping by today, man. Thanks for having me. Are you kidding? Get a chance to talk to you guys about cars, 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 and and catch up. I'm sure the audience enjoyed it. Zuckerman, thank you. Always. Do you have anything to promote, my friend? Just your uh, the real Zuckerman Instagram. Drive safe. Are you, safe. I, are you on Instagram? I am on Instagram, at Ian Zeering on Instagram. All right, and I'm at Spike First. And this is Spike's Car Radio. We'll see you next week. Thanks for listening to Spike's Car Radio. Download new episodes every Wednesday on the Podcast One app or subscribe now at Apple Podcasts or PodcastOne.com. Hey, everybody, it's Chad Prather here, the guy that's unapologetically Southern on YouTube. Join me every Thursday for the Chad Prather Show exclusively here on Podcast One. I'm bringing armchair philosophy and observational humor to what's going on in the world as guests help me sort it all out. Nothing is off limits on the Chad Prather Show. Again, every Thursday, it's new episodes of the Chad Prather Show right here on Podcast One. Download and listen to new episodes exclusively on PodcastOne.com, the new Podcast One app, or subscribe on Apple Podcasts.